the interferometer, let's do a spatial dimension where I take the wave apart and I subtract, you know, the right from the left frequency, mm -hmm. then I get this right here. Mm -hmm. I get this circle that I can expand and contract, all right? Then if I go down to the next picture, here's using the interferometer to adjust mm -hmm. 1.6 megahertz because that's what was one of Rice's frequencies for cancer. 1.6 megahertz. Mm -hmm. And what I'm telling the interferometer to do is to pump the crystal oscillator to go to move from 1.6 megahertz to 1.56120 because how do I know that 1.6 megahertz was exactly what he had? Understand. So I want the machine to cover a little range here because suppose cancer isn't cancer. You follow me? Mm -hmm. Suppose that maybe cancer is just a little bit off today or somehow it's genetically modified. So what I want to do is I want to be able to cover a range and I want to be right on his frequency. I want this to return mm -hmm. all the time to 1.6. Mm -hmm. But I want to be able to vary it. So let's go look at a pump wave. And we'll, we'll hit this first picture. It says the gate frequency of 0.1 hertz is triggered. The interferometer to make changes in the frequency in the 1.604 megahertz wave. Mm -hmm. So what I've told the interferometer to do here is pump at 0.1 hertz. And when you click on this, it'll open up and it should come up to your, your uh, Microsoft player. So you just double click that one. And it'll load up. And let's see if you get that. Yeah, it's a quick time. And yes. it shows. Uh, and oh, you I watch see. the counter. Uh huh. You see it? You see it pumping there? Yep. And then so look it's... at the counter. Oh, so, fascinating. Yeah, so I'm scanning all the frequencies in that area at one time. And what is the range again of the scan? The scan is. 1.6. Yeah, I'm using, I, I'm taking his cancer frequency, uh -huh. and I'm telling it to vary all over the bandwidth using this one frequency with this pump wave. How far away from 1.6 megahertz does it go before it comes back? Well, if you look at the counter there. It, tough to read, but. Yeah, I know. It goes, it goes down, Jeff, to about 50 hertz. Gee. So it's moving all over. It is indeed, all right, but very precisely so. And uh, hold on, we'll pause and come right back. Good job. Okay, back with John Padini and uh, learning all kinds of things. So we can see how that wave form covers a range and returns over and over and over again. It sweeps, but it always yeah. comes back to home. Okay, John. All right, so here's the thinking here, that your body has certain frequencies that it is constantly emanating. In other words, the cells talk to each other. And so what I want to do is I want to be able to take this interferometer and I want to be able to take the frequencies that the cells are talking at. And I want to put it into the interferometer, flip it around, and have it pump it back. You follow me? Sure. So I want to reverse whatever the cell is doing. And this is part of the, you know, Tom Bearden's theory of four-way mixing in the Peori machine and the Rife machine. And so what I want to do is what you have to be able to do is since we don't know exactly, you know, 
what was in this rice machine. I mean, nobody has been able to find a a working machine that is a that is a true rife machine. You follow me? Mm -hmm. From the 30s. Right. And who we're talking about is if we move down the pages a little bit and and we'll come across this first drawing which is a block diagram of the interferometer oscillator and this sort of is, is a block diagram so you can understand that it's crystal controlled in other words I have set the the frequency anywhere between 1 megahertz to 4.33 megahertz now this is very important because mm -hmm. this was in the original rife machine the 4.33 megahertz so now I've got my 4.33 megahertz, okay. which is the carrier wave for the Rife tube. You follow me? Okay, 4.33 megahertz was the carrier wave upon which and within which, I guess, other frequencies were embedded. Yes, and now we're going to get into how that was embedded. Okay. All right. Now, see this, where it says, right, just follow the, the box down, and it says gated interferometer. Now, that's a gate. That's a DC gate that allows the, the frequency that you're putting into this to be pumped into this 4.33 megahertz. It's, it's, basically, you would term it, Jeff, a modulator. You follow me? Gotcha. But a DC modulator. Mm -hmm. And not so much where it's working like amplitude modulation on a radio station mm -hmm. or FM modulation. Right. And for any of you out there saying, what are they talking about? Just keep in mind that all this is on John's yeah. website, on the page for you. Don't worry about it. You're not going to be tested on this. What we're trying to do <laughs> is explain to you how true scientific inquiry and brilliance uh, cracked an incredible riddle and solved it. Yeah. This, I mean, this is the only way you can do it is by taking all the blocks and putting them together. Right. And so you can see down here I've got in the next box I say dual phase oscillator. So when I say dual phase, that means that this oscillator can do both phases, plus and minus. In other words, out of phase from each other, like, like 180 degrees out from each other, but in the same plane. You follow me? Mm -hmm. So that if I was to take this dual phase oscillator and couple this together, you would see nothing at its output. It would be it would be hidden. So mm. that's exactly what I'm saying there. And then I go over to a four wave pump mixer, which is mixing four more waves with the dual phase. And then this is this then is amplified and goes into the gated interferometer, and then this frequency appears up here where it says antenna and ground. See? It's like you're sitting in between this. Mm -hmm. Two plates, in other words. Okay. Now, see this sense here? It says potential sense. Mm -hmm. That's an electrode that would be placed on you. So it's sensing the potential that you're already at, whether you're positive, you're mm -hmm. negative, it's sensing all that. That's on the block diagram of the interferometer yeah. oscillator. Okay. okay, so let's go down a little further. Okay. And then you run across another diagram. Oh, I see. Special thanks to James Baer yeah. for the work he And uh, James has been on the program uh, years mm -hmm. ago, another uh, another fine, fine mind. Yeah. Right. Special thanks to him because without James Baer, um, I don't think this whole routine would have started up again. Wow. Well, yeah. Yeah, he was uh, he was a great guest. Uh, just yeah. Superman. All right. And then also special thanks is given to Tom Bearden for his in, insight into this scalar vector field. Mm -hmm. In other words, what we're making is a scalar field that we want to use the scalar field because it's at a zero. In other words, it's non-detectable.